Okay, so on to the first problem. Um, the problems today basically are about arc length. Okay, so let's have a look at... So I'm starting at question 6 in chapter 5. So we're going to consider that oh, cardioid described or parameterized by the following polar equation. Okay, so um, you would have seen this curve in first semester when you were graphing polar curves, right? Now, I'm just going to draw a rough sketch of the curve over here. Now, cardioid kind of gives you an, possibly an idea of what the, what the graph might look like. Anybody remember what the cardioid looks like? Ah, well, it looks something like this. So it's a bit like a heart, okay? Over here it's two, up here it's one, minus one. Okay, so um, a, better, a much better picture is this one that I've created earlier. <laughs> now, you can see in that picture, just using maple, um, polar plot, um, you can see that actually the, the curve, it's not really heart-shaped, it's more like a peach or a plum, right? So. Anyway, this is, this is how I'd just draw it. If I was drawing it in an exam, I'd probably be a little bit more careful. Um, that we're asked to calculate the arc length of the curve. Okay, so we're working in polar coordinates here. So an arc length, it has its, a special um, uh, formula for the arc length. And here it is. So, now, probably the most challenging thing with these kind of integrals is managing the square root sign away. That's the, that's the difficulty, that's the challenge. Sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's not. In this particular um, example that we're going to do, it's not too bad. Okay, we're going to do one where it's really hard to manage the square roots on way. But for this one, it's not too bad. So what we're going to do is calculate the derivative and put this in and then try to simplify. So let's calculate derivative dr d theta. So that's going to be something like minus sine theta. So r squared plus dr d theta all squared. So r equals 1 plus cos theta. So just take that, square it. And this is going to go to sine squared theta. Now, when we expand the bracket, we're going to get cos squared plus sine squared equals 1, right? So here we're going to get 2, 1 plus cos theta. Now, we're going to have to square root this and integrate it. Now, this doesn't look like the square of anything yet, but can anyone suggest how we can make what's in these brackets a square? Yeah, double angle formula. Excellent. OK, it's a little bit different because we're going to go from um, sort of theta to theta on 2, right? So it's a, li it's a little bit different. Before we get to that, though, what I'm going to do, see we've got some symmetry in the x-axis. So all I'm going to do is calculate the length of the top half of the curve and then multiply it by 2. Okay. Now if you integrated from 0 to 2 pi, if you did try to do one revolution, um, you're going to run into problems, I think. Okay. Um, so here, I'm just going to restrict myself uh, to the interval 0 to pi and then multiply it by, by 2. Okay, so... Let's just make a note of that. Total arc length is twice the length of the top half of the 
curve. So, so it's going to be 2 times the following integral. So it's the square root of all of this. Okay, I can take the root 2 out the front. And then I can change this to something involving sine squared theta on 2, right? Oh, sorry, uh, cos squared theta on 2, not sine squared theta on 2. Now, I can take the square root of 2 out again, and I don't need to worry about whether cosine is positive or negative here, because it's always going to be positive. So I take that square root out, I'll get 4 times this. And now I'm just integrating cosine theta on 2. So I'm going to have something like 2 sine theta on 2. And then I just need to plug these two in and I'll get 8. Now, a couple of questions. Can anyone see another way of solving this integral by not going to this sort of double or half angle formula? Any other methods? Interesting idea, even, even simpler than that. You might be able to use a T method. Okay, the method I'm thinking of is where you sort of look at, instead of 1 plus cos theta, 1 minus cos theta, and you multiply by square root 1 minus cos theta on square root 1 minus cos theta. Okay, so you would have something... Um, uh, you know, you, you, you'd basically be multiplying by a factor of 1. So it would be 1 plus cos theta times root 1 minus cos theta over root 1 minus cos theta. So you're going to get a sine, root sine squared up the top. You're going to get root 1 minus cos theta down the bottom. And you can just solve that by, you know, either by inspection or substitution. Okay? Um, that's another way of doing it. You do have to be a little bit careful with this integral because you're integrating from 0 to pi. So, so if you want to be really correct about it, you'd have an improper integral there. Um, OK, so that's one other way of doing it. I think this is quicker, actually, the, one, the way that I've, I've got it. But maybe I'm biased. How, how can you generate a cardioid? It's pretty simple. All you do is you take a, two circles right, of equal radius, and you roll one around the outside of the other. And you have a point on the, on the outside circle, and that sort of traces around this cardioid, OK? It's a bit hard to visualise, but um, I plan to put an animated GIF in a bit later. So, yeah. Any questions for that one?